Okay, morning. Had a lot of rain yesterday, so couldn't get a lot done out in the garage, but uh, new project. Um, going to work on the dog legs and what I've pretty much done. So I've got nothing to work with here. If you look inside here, there's there's absolutely nothing in here. So from from there out, it's all got to be rebuilt on both sides. You can see there's nothing there. So what I did is I got on the net and I found a few photos. And basically what I did is I got uh, something blown up and um, it's not the right size, but it's pretty pretty big. And I've worked out a what I call just an increase rate. So I've worked out the difference between the two. So uh, what have we got? So let's say four centimeters here is actually 4.8 centimeters here in real life. So that's the increase rate. So whatever I measure here, I just times multiply that by 1.347305 blah 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 blah. I can just round that up to 1.35 and then um, that'll give me that measurement. And uh, I've just worked worked a grid pattern over it. And uh, sometimes you've got to work a bit smarter than just trying to make a part. So that's what I'm setting myself up for. I've got a little bit of paper spare to make a template now. So the idea is to make a template, but then cross-reference it with this to make sure it looks right. Um, I'm hoping to get it all in one piece. This is the outside part, um, the outside skin, and the inner part, which is this part over here, this is the inside photo. I don't mind if that's a few pieces. If I, if I do one, like one there, and then another one, and then another one, and another one, that doesn't worry me. But uh, as far as that's concerned I'd like to use one sheet I mean it's not a big deal if I if I just use two and this is a quite a weird transition here it starts to curl in so it's not that big but it may be in my best interest to cut it just to have one part one big panel and then work this one later there's a bit more going on with that one so yeah bring it back well, the plan is to, I've got, I tried to get some more carbon steel. I've got these cut to 80 centimeters. So that's roughly, uh, it's probably to about there. So that might work. That'll get me to that bit there. I've got this big sheet of uh, annealed steel and that's the full length. Um, and that's what I used on the front nose, which is here. So I used some there, down the bottom. It's like a zinc alloy or something like that. But um, just work my way through it now and create a pattern. So the idea is to create a paper pattern on the bus that's reversible so I can get the other side as well and then I'll just make two of each part that I need to to replicate here um, the joggles and then the, and the steps apparently um, shout out to Marcy Junebug she helped me out there which is nice and also hand built Bob threw in some uh, stuff for me as well he's got a great channel really cool stuff there um, you guys should check it out uh, my bead roller doesn't have a one centimeter step die so I may go out and buy some one centimeter uh, bar stock solid bar stock and what I'll do is I'll form it to this shape well actually I'll form it to the bottom of the door that transition there wrap it around 
and then when I make my panel, this panel here, I'll be able to wrap it around that. Um, not sure how I'm going to go there. I, I've had a few thoughts. Apparently these original door skins, or the, the dog leg skin, wrapped around and it was only stitch welded, uh, spot welded along the top. It wasn't a one piece all the way through. I've seen photos of original combis from this era and they, that's how they are. So I think they changed that in 1958. I could be wrong. There seems to be a lot of different information out there. So, And I'm in Australia too, so it's different than the US. This bus doesn't have indicators on the front or bullet lights, whatever you want to call it. It's got the traffic haters. So the year that I say it is, is not going to be the same as in uh, Europe or the USA. So this is a very early, 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 early framed bus. And uh, you can see by the vents at the back, the fact that it doesn't have a fuel gauge and it has semaphores. And uh, just a few other bits and pieces that I found out over time. But anyway, I'll continue with this and keep moving forward. I'd like to be able to get some sort of uh, plans drawn up in the next few hours. It's going to be quite hot here today again, so. And it's my day off, so. Anyway, bring it back. Alright, so back again. And uh, what I've learned is the photo must have been in like a fisheye view. So, although it's good here the measurements are good here and along this flat section as it curls around i'm losing my ability to work out exactly where uh the the break is the increase rate so the increase rate here this is this um this is good here it's not too bad here but it, as the transition as it curls around the bus the, the, the angle of the camera has decreased this measurement so I'm, I've found that I've had to change the, the, the rate at which I um, inflate this measurement but a little bit of guesswork and um, I think I've got there I'm, I was missing the bottom of the door so I've had to uh, make up a door and I know it's probably not exactly right but uh, I don't think it's going to matter that much because I'll be making both to fit both so the it, it will be good for the eye so I've got <clears throat> I've got extra down here I've just left a heap more down there and followed this around there's a little bit there I'll have to add on but it comes around and if you look at this one and you look at that one, they look very similar. I'll turn it that way. And um, down here, it, it kicks along and it gets slightly smaller. And then that'll be the transition into this pillar. So there's a lot more work going on down here, but uh, getting this template done is a big big step for me here because uh, I don't have anything to work with so it's you know looking at numbers and looking at funny pictures and trying to work it out so I feel like the guys in um, Independence Day when they were trying to rebuild the spaceship although it's uh, just a rusty old bus but um, I'm sort of reverse reversing engineering what's here and getting what I need so I'll be able to make a template from that I'll cut it away and draw it out and I haven't got any of the flanges on this so I'll have to add all of that thickness and uh, see how I go I'll make I'll make one up and sit it on the bus and just see how it looks and I'll be able to tune it up from there I don't like the way steel normally what you would do is make one out of steel just the template so just this part you would use a sheet of steel cut it out exact and then fit it up and then that would be your template but i don't like to waste so i just use the paper and i try and get it in the first 
the first go, so. Anyway, bring it back. Okay, back again. So what I've done is uh, basically split the template that I took off of here, which is this big pile of whatever you want to call it, and laid it down, obviously, on the sheet of steel. And what I'm trying to show you here is what I do to make sure these patterns come out nice because this is just a bit of floppy paper and anyway I've got this one I used a Nico pen to start off with I don't I don't generally like to use that but um, anyway the other ones over here you probably won't be able to see the the lines you may be able to see them but um, what I wanted to show you was um, when I'm making these templates I have a razor blade and I tape it down and you can just see that this area here there's a little bit of paper hanging off so it makes the curve not right even though I've tried my best um, I come along with these straight these straight sections here and I put a ruler down and then I run the razor blade and I cut a nice nice crisp line and then also what I do here is I'll just come in and I'll just trim uh, that little bit of junk off there. I won't do it one handed but basically I trim up the line on the steel with the razor blade like bits like that. You see how they're a bit uneven? If you used a sharpie pen or something and went there you'd end up, you know, times two you you may end up three mils out so I get a really crisp line and if you look under here you can see that that line is really crisp and then what I use is my dividers I got this distance in here and then I added just a tiny little bit because you lose a little bit when you fold so I use these and I ran around the template all the way around and that gives me my exact rolled edge and I cut that with my shears and uh, it's always just exactly where I want it no wastage I'm pretty close to the patterns here like three or four mils it's not much so um, out of this one piece I'll get both dog leg skins and the lower dog leg skin out of just one piece of steel and this is 80 centimeters by uh, I think it's 60 so try not to waste anything and I'll probably end up with a section of it over here that I can use for um, some of the inside stuff or maybe even the step but uh, I'll just continue on I just thought I'd show you that that that's just what I use this is the finest line I can get and these work really well to get a line as well they um they make a perfect line so anyway bring you back Yeah. 